thank you for having me. Um, I am Bill Durant, and uh, a friend of mine and I, it, we were in Sacramento uh, doing Nikon school one time, and, and we came across this mural. It was a little segment of the roof, the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel uh, on the side of a, an Italian restaurant, a pizza joint or something like that. So I had him make this photograph of me. And I am not a religious person. Um, I think Bill Fortney probably prays for me regularly, but it ain't working, Bill. Uh, the, uh, but so to say that I feel blessed is an awkward sort of, of uh, construct and language for me. But I have been very fortunate in my career. I've been working in some aspect of photography for well over 50 years now. And by the way, I am a native Savannian. I was born about a mile from here, lived here most of my life. The thing is, in my career, I've always been doing something with photography. But it wasn't the paycheck I got wasn't always for the pictures. A lot of times, the pictures were in support of something else I was doing, whether it was working in photo retail, managing camera stores, or uh, teaching, lecturing, working as a manufacturer's rep, like all the time I spent with Nikon, uh, any, any number of different ways. Uh, I do have uh, a good bit of experience and some great memories yeah. of working uh, with, with the various in iterations of what I always think of as the BPA. Um, and, and had a great, about 10 years uh, of working with the organization. Uh, at the time, I was working with Nikon as a technical rep in their uh, Nikon Professional Services Department. They had challenged us to go out and find other markets besides just the photojournalism market that we worked with so much. And, um, and I stumbled across uh, this group and fell in love with this group for a lot of reasons. Listening to Catherine talk just now reminded me of how challenging and interesting it was to be at these meetings because you talked about stuff with words I couldn't understand or didn't know and, and didn't need to know. And you talked about techniques and things that I didn't need to use in any of the kind of work I was doing, but it was a fascinating education. And the other thing that I always loved about it, working with this group was so good because not only were you probably the most technically proficient, knowledgeable people uh, working in photography, but because of the nature of the environment you worked in, in academia or in medicine, uh, wherever it might be, there was uh, so little ego involved and a willingness to share information and help and learn, and, and that was really thrilling to me. When Connie called me, she asked about doing this, and I said, well, or emailed me, I think, actually, but um, <clears throat> I said, well, you know, I don't work for Nikon anymore, and I don't have any connections there. I can't bring a bunch of equipment. I can't get them to give you a check for your socialization, you know, party or whatever. She said, oh, no, no, we just, we just want you to come talk. I said, okay, well, you also understand I don't shoot Nikon anymore. Um, I've really changed the way I work because one of the things that had happened in all this work is even when I wasn't carrying this, this might have been my normal camera bag, walking around with 40, 40 to 50 pounds worth of camera bag, you know, with whatever I was doing. Well, after I retired, I started thinking a lot, and uh, Fortney, again, uh, on any number of times through the years, Bill has had some influence on me, and um, he had been <laughs> he had been talking about having switched to the Fuji. Uh, X mount system um, and a friend of mine was closing the camera store and he had an XT1 on the shelf and I said well let me try that so my wife and I were getting ready to take a trip to France uh, we've been there a number of times we're real francophiles and love going there and um, I said okay I'm gonna try this it was a real leap of faith for me but I didn't need the pictures for anything I didn't need to shoot illustrations to teach any schools I certainly wasn't shooting for any clients anything like that and I just wanted to try lightening up and see what would happen. So we got to France and had a great time. And one of the reasons I think we had a great time was this was my camera bag. And there was still room in there for a bottle of water. And it was great. Now, when Connie asked me about doing this, she asked initially about me just talking about this transition and knowing that this group has certainly a technical bias to it, I said, I don't really want to try to get into it because one of the things I'm not doing anymore is I'm not getting into the technical part of this. I don't want to do that. I did that for almost 50 years. I don't want to do it anymore. For me, I want to go back to what it was in the beginning where it's just about making pictures. So I said, what I'd rather talk about is that this is just the last change in a series of changes that I realized I'd gone through throughout my life. I took this camera as an experiment. 
So just very simply, the basic little kit lens of the 18 to 55 in this body uh, is the only thing I did, uh, the only thing I used for this whole trip. And, and it was great, just you know, cruising the countryside when we were down in Provence, just riding our bikes. A little impromptu breakfast outside of where we're staying, the restaurant we found to have lunch in later that day, lunch. The, the you know, sidewalk cafes and the markets uh, that are all over the place. One of the things about a camera like this too that makes such a difference <clears throat> is people don't notice you anymore. When I was walking around with two bodies and an 80 to two or 70 to 200, two eight lens on one of them and a bag full of stuff, I mean, you don't take pictures of people without them knowing it, being aware of it. Now I'm just, you know, I'm just another tourist walking around with this little point, almost a point and shoot camera. And so I can do so much more candid stuff without anybody noticing, without worrying about it. And one of the things, one of the technical things I did learn about working with this system is Fuji's got a little piece of technology that I have fallen in love with. And it's an, a variable dynamic range. Now, it does not let you increase the dynamic range of the sensor from what it's capable of doing, but it does let you adapt it. So by having that variable dynamic range, I can manage high contrast situations so much better than I could before without worrying about either losing shadows or losing highlights. And again, these are automatic exposures. I mean, I, I just, I'm routinely shooting aperture priority automatic, and um, these are just straight exposures. I mean, a little bit of manipulation, a little bit of adjustment in uh, Lightroom uh, as, as after the fact. But all the detail is there, or Lightroom couldn't save it. There's a village in the south of France called Le Beau. It's up on a mountaintop. And under it is a quarry. It's closed now, it's no longer functional, but that quarry quarried bauxite from the name Le Beau. Bauxite was the mineral used to make aluminum. And you can wander around in the old quarry and part of it, they've actually closed off, sealed it up, and they can make it completely dark. And they've got, I think it's something like 45 projectors scattered all around and when they make it completely dark, they run theme shows, images in there. And uh, Barbara and I have been to several of these over the years. Uh, and the last one we saw about a year and a half ago now was Chagall, uh, just Chagall's work. Now, here is the, one of the great things about this camera. I'm just standing there doing handheld pictures in the dark of this stuff. I got this one little camera, one body. I am so liberated. I've been in here before with a 45-pound camera bag trying to shoot these pictures. Never got anything as nice as this. We got up to Paris. As soon as we checked into the Airbnb place we were staying in near the Place de, uh, de la Republique, uh, we had the windows open and started smelling gas, fire, something going on. So we walked out. Uh, there was a, a, uh, a strike and a demonstration going on in Paris, which is fairly frequent and um, much better than when it happens here. It's much more civilized because these guys are actually talking to each other and just every once in a while they throw up a little fire, tear gas. Uh, we were sitting a block or so away at a sidewalk cafe having a little wine, kind of watching the activities. And uh, uh, at one point our waitress came over and said, would you like to step inside the cafe for just a moment? So we did. And she said, yeah, I just wanted you to, there was a little whiff of tear gas coming this way and I wanted you to just miss that. And as soon as it was gone, she said, come on back out and sit back in your chair. While we're sitting there watching this, uh, Several guys who were going to be really uh, aggressive and violent went and grabbed a bunch of trash cans and they drug them into the middle of the street and they set fire to them. And the fire department was standing there with the truck and the hoses, so as soon as they set fire to them, they could put it out. Uh, the thing was so obviously staged, but they, they had the demonstration. Anyway, it was fun being in Paris again. Uh, we do love Paris. And just, again, just the kind of casual shooting I can do, just wandering around, this camera has liberated me. That's the real advantage of working with us. Now, there are certain tools we need for certain jobs, and I'm not telling you that you could do the kind of stuff that Catherine's trying to do with this camera. Now, when I started in photography back when I was 17, 18 years old, especially when I was 18 working on the newspaper, which was just a block down the street at that time, I, I was walking around with an old Leica M3 camera, and I could handhold that camera and shoot pictures at a half a second. It's been a long time since I could handhold a camera at a half a second until now, that's a third of a second uh, along the key. Having dinner in a little restaurant, 
in the 10th R&D and small, and we got up to leave, and I looked in the back of the restaurant, and I thought, that's kind of neat. And I went click, click, and walked out. Didn't think anything more about it. Just fell in love with this image. The Rodin Museum in, in Paris is one of our favorite places. Uh, we're big fans of Rodin. And one of the great things, so many museums are so sticky about what you can and can't do. The Rodin Museum, there are no rules. So, you know, the, the problem is the place is so packed with stuff that I always felt nervous walking around with a camera bag. Like I'm going to bump something and knock it over, and I know I can't afford it. The, um, this camera, again, was just very liberating. I could move around, I could finagle until I found a position, even with all the reflections and things, and I, I know how to get rid of this stuff. I don't care. I'm not going to carry that equipment around anymore. I can maneuver until I can see this. And this, uh, this is one of my two favorite sculptures of all time. Bernini is the other one. A piece by Bernini is the other one. But uh, I just this is amazing. And I had that flexibility to just move around and find the shot. Plus just finding the juxtaposition of things uh, within the room. Again, that little point and shoot camera, almost point and shoot camera, means nobody's paying attention to what they're doing uh, when I'm taking the pictures. We went back out. Barbara and I actually got married in uh, Monet's Gardens at Giverny. And so we always try to go back out there for a visit when we can. So we hop the train to Vernon, grab a bicycle at the train station to Vernon, riding out to Giverny across the bridge, you know, the river, early morning, with the fog. Just stopped along the way at a little sidewalk cafe and had some lunch. Hit uh, Monet's Gardens, uh, the dining room, in his studio, house space. Uh, and then back in Paris, later uh, went to one of the museums that uh, has these big circular rooms where the big watercolor paintings are hung. And again, that little camera, the inconspicuousness of that little camera, let me make photographs like this of people in there without anybody paying any attention to what I'm doing. Just again, having that spontaneity. Or positioning this young woman in a shop where my wife is having something done to a dress that she's buying. Uh, and just being able to pull her over by the door and just grab this quick portrait. I think most of us in the room are old enough to know this by now. Uh, life is this constant change, and, and it's certainly been that for me, and it was a struggle early on accepting that, and uh, at some point I think I began to glorify in that. I love that constant change, the way things are always coming at you.